Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. I did a video a few weeks back that showed three different ways of drawing manga faces, and I noticed that many people were saying they liked the big-eyed version the most. And I've hardly done any videos that show that style, and so I thought I would try one uh, in which I show the classic big-eyed manga face and uh, how to draw it. Now, I'm going to do this with a minimum of guidelines, but I do feel like I need at least one... Uh, a set of guidelines for the eyes themselves to make sure that I get them uh, the right shape and so forth. So I'm beginning with a sort of a trapezoid shape here. Um, if you can reproduce that, that you may find that it helps you uh, in uh, doing this drawing. Otherwise, you may just move right on to drawing this eye. Now, this face is turned away from us, kind of turned in this direction. And so, uh, as is often the case, you end up with a kind of compressed uh, manga eye that is, um, you know, kind of narrow from left to right. Uh, I'm drawing the upper eyelash here, and it kind of curves straight into the actual eye itself. Uh, now, this doesn't look very large because it's the eye that's turned away from us, but you'll find uh, when we get to the other eye that that one is uh, considerably larger. Um, let me go ahead and drop in the bottom uh, eyelash, quite small. Uh, on this eye from this point of view. It doesn't take up much space. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and put in a couple of highlights. Uh, this type of large-eyed manga character is um, well known for having shiny looking eyes and the more highlights you put in the shinier the eye looks. So uh, I'm putting in just a narrow kind of triangular one down here. Um, two big ones here, and uh, get the uh, uh, the pupil in here. Sometimes some people make very huge pupils. I mean, there's so many different variations, but uh, the style that I'm doing today has uh, kind of moderately sized pupils, and they put, um, uh, sometimes you'll see this sort of extra line here. I don't know if it relates to anything in human anatomy, but it creates this kind of interesting effect. And I'm going to just sort of toss in a few uh, shading lines here. Uh, generally, you find that the darkest part of the eye is toward the top of the iris. I'm going to darken this in. Now, notice this. This is kind of interesting. As I studied this, I realized that the uh, the eyelashes point down quite a bit in this style, rather than uh, shooting diagonally upwards. And we're almost done here. I guess I'll do just a little more definition down there of the uh, eyelashes. Uh, one important thing is to get the fold of the eyelid um, and with the, the large-eyed style, you will see that the uh, fold of the eyelid is quite, uh, uh, in, you know, it's composed of quite a lot of different lines. So some people will get quite into uh, defining that upper eyelid. I'm going to go ahead and move on to drawing the nose before I move on to the eye, which is kind of an unusual way. But like I'm saying today, I'm not doing the big guideline style. I'm doing kind of a line-by-line -line uh, you know, sometimes you just want to draw something in your notebook or whatever, and you don't want to sit down and do all the careful guidelines. Um, if you look at the middle of the um, pupil, that may give you a little bit of a pointer as to where to um, have the tip of the nose. I was almost making a little pun there, pointer, because <laughs> this is one of those classic pointy-looking noses. Again, I'm not a huge fan. I don't normally draw that style, but it certainly is very common. Um, and then uh, from there, I think I will move on to drawing this other eye before we draw the rest of the face. Now, like I said, not so many guidelines, but I do want to get a, a kind of a box in here that gives me some sense of where the eye is going to be contained, and it does sort of extend from the guidelines that we created for the, uh, that other eye. Notice again the space um, between the space between these two eyes, a very precise kind of a distance. Um, if you compare the boxes, maybe imagine a third box there, that might help you to do that. Now watch this as we drop in the upper um, eyelash. It curves um, quite diagonally down here. You know, this side of it is very diagonal as it comes down um, to, I would say, a little beyond the midway point of that uh, square. And then sort of imagine a little bit of a triangle here um, to help you get a sense of uh, how to hook this back. Now that it doesn't go, you're not uh, delineating this entire triangular area. You're uh, just uh, 
beginning a hook here, and then that kind of reaches down here to create the lower eyelash, um, considerably wider on this eye uh, from left to right, but not nearly as wide as the upper uh, eyelash. Um, I'm going to be building this up more, but let's go ahead and get the uh, iris in. Um, and it's taking up a very, very large uh, section of the, the white of the eye here. Notice the distance uh, between the bottom eyelash and uh, the bottom of the eye, the iris as it comes up. And you get just a little sliver of white on this side uh, of the iris, at least in this point of view of this person, kind of turning away from you, looking back at you. It's a very common um, pose in manga illustrations, I find. And uh, let's go ahead and repeat what we did before, getting in, although everything gets larger because this eye is larger, we'll get the two um, highlights over here. Um, get this sort of uh, triangular shaped secondary lower uh, highlight. Going to get the pupil in here, certain uh, size. Get that extra sort of mysterious line that I don't think relates to human anatomy. And uh, I'm putting in, notice these, that these lines sort of fan out almost like the spokes of a wheel. Uh, they, that's how they relate to that uh, pupil. And I'm going to dash in. This I find this kind of fascinating that there are eyelashes here on this side the upper left, and there are quite a lot of eyelashes down here, um, and they kind of curve up just a touch more than those ones that we had drawn over here. They're not so completely pointing downwards. Um, but there's no uh, eyelashes uh, to speak of between those two points. It's just sort of a black line there. Let's go ahead and get in uh, the fold, the lines that indicate the upper fold of the uh, eyelid. These lines tend to be uh, closer to the inner corner, the inside corner of the eye. They don't tend to go all the way down here on that side. Um, and let's get some uh, just little indications of the lower eyelid. It would not be a Mark Crilly video if I did not say the word indications or indicate <laughs> about a thousand times during the course of the video. So there you go. I'm going to go ahead and put the other side of the face. Uh, uh, this can be incredibly difficult, I find, uh, to get this line right. So watch as I do this. This is the side of the cheek, and when we see the point of the nose, just as we come past that point, we will be curving down like this. Um, it sort of... Uh, heads off uh, away from the bottom of the nose and comes to a point. Boy, I wonder if I can come up with a good guideline for you here. I don't know, maybe dead between those two, dead center between those two eyes. That's where this uh, point of the chin is coming in. Now watch the other side of the chin curving much more gently. Um, you know, it's, it's diagonal, but it's uh, quite a horizontal you know, it's much more horizontal than vertical. This line curving back here, and, and notice the space between those uh, lines to help you get that right. The mouth is very de-emphasized in a lot of manga styles, and uh, especially I find the large-eyed manga styles tend to really make small mouths. But again, notice the distance here between the bottom of the nose and uh, the mouth. The mouth a little closer to... Uh, the lines of the nose than it is to the chin. And that is more or less what we need uh, for the lines of the face. I'm going to drop in a couple of blushies here, and we're going to uh, pull back now to draw the rest of the facial features. Okay, well I spent a lot of time uh, going through each one of those lines. I'm going to try to move it along with this next uh, uh, part of the video. Uh, drawing the eyebrows, notice the distance uh, between the, the top of the eyes and the eyebrows themselves. You want to try to replicate that distance. And also the beginning and end points of the eyebrows. Uh, fairly important uh, to get those in the right spot. 
Um, go ahead and draw that. It's a very gentle curve, and in general, uh, manga characters, female characters at least, do not have very thick eyebrows. They're pretty uh, thin, pretty delicate. Um, I'm going to start putting in uh, indications of the hair. There we go, indications again. Um, and uh, at, at this video, it's really it's not line by line for the hair. Uh, come up with your, I would figure, everyone wants to come up with their own uh, hair styles, but this will be sort of an example, maybe give you some inspiration. Um, dashing in. And notice that uh, these lines, very easy for to, me to make because they are following the curve of my wrist. Um, Any time that you can take advantage of that natural curve of your wrist is very helpful. In fact, there's uh, something a, a little odd about the way I do these videos in that I, I, I kind of have to tape these <laughs> pieces of paper down to the table so they don't move around. Uh, and as a result, when I come over here, and right here above this eye is where the lines are going to begin to uh, change direction. Um, for me, it becomes increasingly awkward to make uh, gentle lines curving because I'm not following the curve of my wrist. So I'm having to move over here, and, and sometimes people think, are you ambidextrous? Are you able to uh, draw with your left hand? No, I am not. I'm just moving over here. Normally, I would twirl the page around uh, to try to make lines like this, um, but, it, you know, there's no getting around it. It's a little awkward just because... Uh, I'm having to, to keep this page in one spot. Uh, but if you are following along with this, go ahead and, and move the, you know, turn the page entirely upside down as you work on these lines, and you will find that uh, it's much easier because you're going with the natural, the natural flow of your wrist. In fact, I'm going to uh, stop embarrassing myself with these cruddy looking lines <laughs> and uh, kind of get to that stuff later on as I finish up the drawing. Um, these lines are, uh, it's very common uh, with female characters, a certain type of female character, to have a strand of hair that comes between the eyes uh, just in front of the ears. So that's the kind of hairstyle that I'm doing here. Oh, the placement of the ears. Let's notice uh, the size of the eye. Uh, and this really shows you how huge these eyes are because they end up being um, as large as the ears. <laughs> Which, <laughs> I hope your eyes aren't as big as your ears in real life. That would be kind of freaky. Uh, but it works uh, in the manga style. And uh, again, this is not a video about drawing ears. I probably should do one uh, like that. But I'm just going to sort of dash in the lines here. You find that people are not really looking at the ears so much, so you don't have to feel so much uh, pressure as an artist. Um, notice the size of uh, the, that is taken up by the hair here. Um, in this style in particular, the, um, the top of the manga character's head is really quite large. Uh, and if you get that wrong, and in my early days I used to, um, you're, the, it's, the whole the drawing is thrown off uh, if, you're, if the top of the head is not large enough in your drawing. Well, I feel like I'm kind of uh, almost spending too much time on this one video taking you through every single line. But let's uh, do just the last few things here, like the neck. The neck, notice it comes over to this side past the point of the chin. There's usually some indication of a shadow down here beneath um, the jaw. I'm going to drop in a line for the um, shoulder over here. Maybe put the strap of uh, her dress or whatever right here. And um, after I get this last bit in here, which is the other side of the neck, and I may be, hang on, I may be making her neck a little too thick here. Uh, in this cartoony style, the uh, the neck ends up quite small and delicate. So I'm going to go ahead and move the neck over there. And getting the uh, this line in a certain type of diagonal angle. See if you can reproduce that. Uh, I'm going to throw in that other strap, and then. I am going to have to fly through the rest of this in time lapse just to keep this uh, video at a reasonable length. My apologies to people who hate time lapse uh, or kind of feel like it's a cheat. Uh, you should have shown us everything. Um, 
uh, unfortunately, uh, they're just to keep these videos at a reasonable length. You know, some people, they don't have time. They don't have time to watch a 20 minute long video. I know some of you do. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of this uh, in time lapse, and I'll come back and maybe uh, give you some final tips before I end the video. Well, there you have it, my attempt at a classic big-eyed uh, manga female character. Hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry I had to time-lapse once again through all the shading. Clearly I need to do a real uh, shading video one of these days. But in the meantime, I want to thank everyone who has bought Miki Falls, my manga series from HarperCollins. Four books in this series. Greatly appreciate your support uh, if you get that. And Brody's Ghost from Dark Horse. Two books in this series. And I just got word that they're going to be doing a special e-book edition of this coming out June 8th. I'll definitely be talking more about that in the weeks ahead. Um, but let's go ahead and wind this one down. Thanks so much for watching my videos, friends, for leaving comments, for, for telling your friends about my videos, all your uh, support. It really does mean an awful lot to me. But uh, let's go ahead and lay the pencil down. I want to thank you once again for watching this video. I hope you found it useful, and I will be back with another one real soon.